Hey guys, Darren here from Atlas Brace Australia, here to talk about neck braces today, um, specifically the Atlas brand. Um, neck braces, they, they've come in for a bit of a rough trot over the last few years. There's been a lot of bad press and a lot of talk about, I guess, not so much the preventative injuries they do, but you know the injuries that they can cause, collarbones and things like that are one of those. So here to dispel, you know, I guess, dispel some of those myths. With the Atlas brace, they first came out with the first generation of it about 12 years ago, sort of on the back of the original brace that hit the market. And when the original brace hit the market, it was based on a really rigid form. I guess starting from scratch, nobody really knew uh, what was going to work and what would be required. Atlas had the benefit of hindsight um, following someone else and they've come up with a unique way of doing it and probably the biggest thing with Atlas is flex. So the brace will actually follow your natural bodily movements. Let's face it, when we're on a bike, we're moving, we're up and down, we're jumping, we're up and down hills. You need the brace to follow your bodily movements. So that's the first one you can see there with that tether in the back, you've actually got the movement across the shoulders. The second thing, the original brace was always designed to sit, fit on the spine and on the sternum. For obvious reasons, you'll want to protect those areas and actually be either side of them. So what the Atlas brace does, they actually sit either side of the spine at the back and at the front, they sit either side of the sternum. You have a look at the compression pads there. They're actually got 30 mil of absorption there. So when you do have an impact, the brace will compress and it will spread the impact rather than sending the impact through. So obviously you're really well protected from collarbones and you know and other, I guess, other injuries. Another thing with the neck brace, a lot of people talk about collarbone injuries, that's the sort of the forefront of just about everything. A neck brace will stop that pointy edge of a helmet actually hitting your collarbone. By having a neck place in place there, you've actually got some additional protection there. Without a neck brace, if you do have a crash, and let's face it, we all tuck and roll, your helmet can actually dig down and it can get you in the collarbone. So that neck brace, if it's got that little bit of flex there, will take away that initial impact. So, you know, really important thing to do. What a neck brace is trying to protect you from is that critical cervical spine injury, that head-on impact. That's the first and foremost, that's a thing. Obviously, you know, there's, there's flexion and hyperextension injuries, but 89% of the catastrophic neck injuries are that compression injury. So that's what a neck brace is trying to protect you from. With the Atlas brace, um, there's a few different takes on it, and we look after pretty much all age groups. So we start at the tiny, tiny little guys. So you think about, you know, and I've seen people throwing two and three year olds on peewees, this is for that guy. So you've got that added protection. Where this differs from your standard traditional donut, it is a proper neck brace. So you can actually open the brace to fit it on the kid, close it up, but it actually has a hard plastic base at the front rather than just foam. It's foam through the back. It also has that little spine protector there that actually holds the thing in place, stops the brace from turning. Um, you know, little guys don't have a lot, of, a lot of room for a brace to sit on, so you need that contact point at the back to actually hold the brace in. So that's called our Brawl Brace. When you look at our standard brace, this is our Atlas Air Light, which is a, this uh, introduced last year, 2022. The Atlas Air Light comes in quite a few versions. There's a Tyke version. So the Tyke version is your next step up from the Brawl. So that kind of suits you, you know, just coming off a of Peewee, maybe onto a 110, you're sort of 65cc riders. Then from there we go to the Prodigy Brace, which again looks very similar to this, but just, you know, slightly smaller. Um, the Prodigy Brace is again for that next step up, maybe getting on an 85 or 125. The Prodigy is also good for ladies. A lot of ladies tend to be, you know, quite smaller frames. So the Prodigy is a great go-to for there, if you can't find an adult brace to suit. And then of course we get into the adult braces. So this is the Air Light. The only difference between the Air Light and the standard Air Brace, the standard Air Brace has a little bit more adjustability. So when you're fitting a neck brace, the first and foremost, the most critical thing is that gap between the helmet and the brace. You don't want any more than 40 mil. Okay, I've seen people riding around with 10 mil. You certainly don't want less than 40 mil. Um, you know, too much less than 40 mil. I've seen, you know, little kids riding around with, you know, their brace sitting under their helmet. That's not ideal because you can't see. If you can't turn your head, you're actually unsafe because you can't see what you're doing. So always try to maintain that gap around that 40 mil and certainly down to about 20, but no less than that. Um, most braces come with adjustable shoulder pads. If they don't, you can buy the shoulder pads as an optional item if you need them. But very important when you're fitting up for a brace to actually know what helmet you've got as well and preferably fit up with the helmet on if you can. If you can't, just measure your gap between your helmet and the shoulder, subtract what the width of the brace will be and that'll give you an idea of what the fitment is. For those people, and you hear a lot of trail riders and things, particularly with the standard brace, conventional brace, always has a little bit of a ramp at the back. It's obviously got that little bit of a ramp at the front. And that's to, that's to obviously help with hyperextension and flexion injury. So when you do go into that tuck and roll. Um, 
What it also limits, I guess, is that when you are riding, particularly trail riders, um, when they're going up and down hills, when you put your head back, you don't want your head hitting the back of the brace. They could be living, you can't see where you're going, that can cause a crash. So what Atlas have come up with is this little thing, the vision. As it says, more vision. So this still gives you that protection for that catastrophic neck injury, the, you know, the compression injury. So it still sits across your shoulders. It's still based on the same fundamentals. So you've still got that flex and everything there. It comes with all the adjustable shoulders and everything in it, but you don't have the ramp off the back. You don't have the ramp off the front. So you've actually got that full range of movement so you can see what you're doing but you're still protected from that you know, compression injury. So very, very important. These come in two sizes. All of the other braces in the adult braces come in three sizes and the juniors are one size with the adjustable pad kits to suit all. So thanks guys, that's our range of neck braces. Hopefully uh, there's enough there for you today to figure out which brace is right for you because it's very important to get the one that's the right size. Cheers.